Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Ask you Anything presented by Mojo Consulting. I'm your host, Angel Leon, Mojo's Director of Personnel. We're glad you're with us for Episode 5 of Ask you Anything, and with us today is one of Mojo's team managers for our Managed Services Department, Chat Wheat. You might remember Chat from a couple of our episodes in Season 1, notably our Disaster Recovery and Backups episode, which honestly is by far one of our favorites. But today we're talking about those skills you don't really think about when you get into IT. What do I mean? Stay tuned to find out. But first, let's welcome Chad back to Ask Anything. Chad, it's great to have you back. Uh, how have you been? I've been great, on Hell, thank you. Well, it's always great to have you back. We really enjoyed your, your appearances here because they're fun, full of information, and that's exactly what we like. But let's start with the following, because when you think about a career in IT, the first thought that comes to mind is degrees, certificates, but there's much more than the technical side of things. Let's talk about communication. How important is communication within the IT realm? A, a wise man once told me, uh, you know what you have when you have a degree? And I said, what? He said, a piece of paper. Now, <laughs> that's a little <laughs> bit oversimplifying. But to your point, I mean, we can train a wombat to do this job with the technical skills and how to push the right buttons and everything. But in IT, it takes a lot more than just technical acumen. It, I think the first thing that, especially in a help desk or service desk environment, it takes empathy. Each customer that contacts a help desk, you know, it, they feel like they're the most important person right then and there because they have an issue and they can't work. So, you know, we have to understand that, yes, they at this moment, they are the most important person. Um, it's sort of like the old college professor, you know, they don't understand that you have other classes they want your full attention. They want you to work on everything they, they give you, regardless of anything else that's going on in your life. And in, in a way, that's the same with IT. Uh, they're transparent to whatever customer load you have or whatever else you're working on. So you, you have to have empathy to feel the customer's pain, so to speak. The second thing, I think, is you have to have an investigative mindset. And I often tell our new hires, because they get a lot of questions direct from customers, I tell them, you don't have to have all the answers, but you have to know where to find all the answers. And yes, even uh, IT guys use Google. So, <laughs> you know, there's places like Google or uh, past tickets or knowledge bases, uh, vendor boards or documentation, and importantly, peer sharing. That brings me to the third point of what you really need. You have to have a, a mindset of teamwork. When you're working in IT, especially, again, in managed services on, on a help desk, for example, you don't exist in a vacuum. While you're one-on-one -on -one with the customer, it may, it may seem like that, but you know you should have a whole team behind you. And Mosier, for example, we do a great job with collaboration, and I'm sure other companies do too. So you've got those resources, and peers are among the most valuable resource. So use them. I want to I want to say something because when we were preparing for for this uh, recording, you mentioned a quote that I found to be fascinating, and that was, "Before we train you, we have to untrain you." What do you mean by that? Well, for Mosier, and I'm sure again other companies, um, a, a new hire needs to learn skills that matter to that specific customer set and their new company. We want to foster and keep the the person's logical and investigative and customer support mindset, but they sort of have to learn how to unlearn so they can learn, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying, I guess, is, is you need to stay nimble and open to change. You need to learn how your customers and your company, how they do business. Uh, so if I go from you know, company A to company B, they're going to have a totally different way of approaching internal things, how, how they uh, interact with customers and things like that. So you really, you know, day one in a new job, you have to be a, a change proponent. I think it was uh, Ben Franklin once wrote in a letter, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except for death and taxes. And I think change happens. We see it all around us globally with, you know, pandemics and social, intellectual, I mean, change technological things change all the time so even on day one somebody has to be prepared to sort of unlearn your habits and relearn what your customers and what your company expects from you yeah and that's 
I think it's very important because people don't realize that how a place does things, it definitely varies from place to place. And so it even happens in HR. I mean, when I came to Mosher a couple of years ago, I was doing HR very differently than the way we do it here. Obviously, I came in from a very large organization where we had, you know, big brother headquarters basically looking down on every field office and telling us what to do. Whereas when I came here at Mosher, I was the one that started setting the tone. I was the one that started setting those guidelines and the things and the way that I like them to, to be. So it kind of varies, right? So if you go from a big brother, say one of those big IT corporations to somebody who is much smaller, like we are at Mosher Consulting, um, it is going to be a little bit different than, than those big corporations. Yeah. And we talk about uh, internally, you know, uh, culture is very important to us. And we try to espouse, you know, what we call the Mosier way. That's a lot different than a lot of companies. Uh, like I said, that includes cultural, community, family oriented. And for a lot of people coming in, that's sort of a shock that, you know, we're so mindful of, especially the employees and the communities we live in. Yeah, and that's a totally different set of ideas because the way we do things at Mosher beyond the technical skills, um, the way we treat employees, the way we welcome everybody, the way we make everybody feel as part of our of the Mosher family, that just speaks volumes, and then that creates that mentality of of work. I mean, if you if you treat your family members right they're going to produce, they're going to work at a high level. So that's very interesting as well, because for, for IT people, as I was talking with Bob Russo uh, several episodes ago, they're different in the way that they're motivated to do their job. They're a little bit different than, than most other employees from other, from other categories of work. So switching gears real quick, uh, when people think of IT people in general, they don't think about how tough-minded they are. This is interesting to me because IT people require the use of logic and rational analysis in order to solve problems. As I think back to a recent episode with uh, Bob Russo, who I just mentioned, he made a great point about how IT people are first and foremost problem solvers. Would you agree with this statement? The short answer is, is yes. IT people have to be tough-minded and sort of thick-skinned, especially uh, working in a help desk or managed services situation, uh, because you want to maintain that empathy for the customer, but you have to realize that they're going to come charging out because if they're entering, if they have a problem with their PC or environment, they're already going to be sort of spun up and maybe even angry. And sometimes they'll take it out on you. So, you know, you have to understand it's not personal. You didn't do anything to make their environment break, but you may be the focus of their anger. So, and also in a help desk, you ask about, being a problem solver first and foremost so in a help desk yes you want to you know you want to have a mindset of immediacy you you need to solve their short-term problems right then and there because like i said they don't see the big picture they don't care what your company what their company's doing they want you to fix their pc so they can work and then in a uh, more consultative role that's when we start looking at trends uh, and long-term solutions you know like uh, look back on a ticket history are people at this client having the same problems and what can we do to be more proactive so you know, we don't get that same call tomorrow. No, oh, that's that's very interesting that you mentioned all of that because on the flip side, I do want to say that another notion when people request IT help is that, you know, they know that you guys are the experts. They know that you guys have, quote unquote, the answers to whatever problem they have. Yes, the, the call might be an upsetting one because they need to print 50 pages and for some reason their printer cannot connect to their laptop. And that to somebody like me, who's not uh, as technical as, as some of our IT counterparts within Mosher, could seem very frustrating. Um, <laughs> yeah. I had this. I had this happen to me a couple of weeks ago, and we had a one of one of our other team managers within within your team help me out with that. But it was a simple solution. It was something as making sure that all the drivers within my my computer were set to the drivers that I needed from that specific printer. So. Simple solution, but right, if you're not in that right frame of mind and you're thinking, ah, oh, this guy's not helping me or this thing cannot print, then my attitude is going to reflect on that ticket. And then I'm going to start probably making some comments or, or, you know, in passing to the individual who's helping and that's not good. So I agree, you know, yeah. 
I, our IT folks, I know for a fact, have a great thick skin. They're, they're very, first of all, a lot of them are very fun and jovial to talk to. So they're very positive minded. And I think, again, that's where that empathy comes in because, you know, you said it was a, a quick fix or a, an easy fix, but to your user, they wouldn't, you may have not thought about that or they think they should have thought of it. So, you know, we have to treat them like this is why we're here. This is our job, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're an expert in HR, for example. I have zero idea of all the things you do in the background, all the forms <laughs> and legalities, et cetera, et cetera. So while you may come up with a, a quick fix in an HR scenario, it's beyond me. So we have to treat them like a lot of people have this problem. We're, we're here to, to fix it. Right. No, and that's what I mean. It's, it's, I, I call it a simple solution because it, in the end, not knowing what was the problem really as a whole for me was obviously frustrating. But when, when our teammate came in and, and he basically sat down with me and said, oh, this is what it is. And it took basically less than five minutes to fix that. To me, it seemed like a simple solution. But to me as an end user, I don't, I didn't know I had to, you know, look out for those things. So I, I was, when he was working on my laptop and it only took five minutes to fix, I was like, oh, that was easy. But of course, without that technical knowledge, without that technical experience, I, I would have known to go to the places where he went on my settings and, and deleted my printer, install it again, and make sure I downloaded the correct uh, drivers for it. So, but speaking of our managed services team, you're a, t- a team manager within our managed services group, which is a very special group of individuals, as I mentioned, they're unique with great talents. I know you, you're very, um, you, you love your team and you're always telling us that our managed services team has a very unique way of doing things. Why is that? Well, yeah, <laughs> lovingly, first of all, I'll say <laughs> <laughs> lovingly. It's like herding cats sometimes. <laughs> uh, and But I mean that in a good way. I mean, all the guys and gals in managed services have great skills, um, mm-hmm. but and they're independently minded, which, you know, again, that's where the herding cats come in. But being independently minded is also an asset, and we foster that. Yeah. But even with the independent mindset, we try to, you know, have them focus on that collaborative mindset because let's face it, if I go fix your printer, your network, and then it breaks tomorrow and I'm not here, somebody else is going to have to come back in and do it again. So we need to share, we need to collaborate, and we need to document. Yeah, another unique thing I think about our staff is we have a lot of uh, what I'll call nerds. And again, Lovingly, I'll call myself a nerd, but it's not just uh, technology. I mean, we have tech nerds, we have gaming nerds, we have movies, comic nerds. I'm a history nerd, uh, and we like nerds, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> because that nerdism outside of work it shows sort of an innate ability to follow and research your passions, which that mm-hmm. translates directly to your job. I mean, you you love something that much, and you're willing to spend the brain power to go further into it, you know. That, that really translates well to to uh, the professional world too. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I have to say I'm a, I'm a nerd at heart. I am a little bit of a nerd for everything that you just mentioned, history, gaming, movies, uh, trivia, you name it. Nerd. But it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> uh, and I admit it, I'll be the first one to admit it. Yeah, we, my family and I just went on a vacation uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually more than a couple of weeks ago to Universal Studios in Florida and you know, when you have an 18 year old and a 70 year old who live and breathe Marvel and all these comics and things like that, you want to be an active participant in their lives and the things that they like, you have to enjoy those things. And so it's not uncommon for this household to be part of and enjoying such things and going to the movies and watching such things. And so it's, it's part of our life, but it's also, as you mentioned, is, is a passion because we enjoy it uh, individually and as a family. So as you mentioned, that translates into your job. I mean, my yeah. office is decorated with Star Wars. I've got Marvel stuff in there. I've got a couple of Batmans. Batman is my favorite character, by the way. <laughs> I just like that he doesn't have any superpower. And he's his superpower is just being rich and being able to afford yeah. nice. Well, we, we'd cool all like things. that. but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I digress. So I, I do understand that. And that's something that I think from 
our team's perspective, that translates into the way that they do things. Yeah, I think that also shows, I mean, that, you know, we that mindset of wanting to learn more, wanting to know how things work. And again, it translates perfectly into the IT community. Yes, it does. It does. And that basically translates into continuing to learn, you know, develop your skills, just wanting to, to continue to evolve as a human, as a professional, and even your personal brand, as we're talking with all the things that we like beyond work and how in, in the long run, that really makes it for a better team because you have people who share the same ideas, share the same, uh, like, you know, they like the same thing. So when they come to work together, they, hey, what did you think of the last episode of Boba Fett? And there's a discussion that happens and, you know, people bring in their thoughts if they liked it or not, if they liked the series or not, if they're looking forward for the new Obi-Wan series that's coming out in May. So those things make for a better team. They make for a better cultural and better environment. And then at the end, and that you, just well, makes... Let me interrupt you. You know Han Solo shot first, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. See what I mean? See, it's it just it just brings up discussions that. <laughs> but guys, that's not even his real name. <laughs> See, we could go nerd all day long. <laughs> yeah, this is suddenly turning into a Star Wars episode. But no. <laughs> Last thing before we go. Where do you see uh, the IT folks going into the future? The IT employee of today is not the same than that of five years ago. So how do you see the roles evolving in the future? Yeah, well, we, we talked, um, I think, in one of the previous episodes about, you know, the IT guy with the scruffy Jurassic Park t-shirt on sitting in the basement with a Mountain Dew and hacking away at a keyboard. That's, that's not who we are anymore. Um, it's evolved. And I think going forward, I guess there's three things that will never really go out of style. That's the customer centric approach, uh, both internally and externally, you know, your internal customers, mm -hmm. your external customers, and that empathy and, you know, the ability to put yourself in their, their shoes. I think the, the second thing is that ability to stay nimble in learning new technologies. Cause as you all know, uh, technology changes about every three months and, you mm -hmm. know, new products yeah. come up, old products die off and it's just the way of the world. So you have to stay nimble. And then I think the, the third uh, thing, and we touched on a little bit is the ability to manage stress, to have a thick skin when you're dealing with customers and to keep a good work-life balance, because mm -hmm. if you're not happy, you're not going to be happy in the workplace, you know? Um, so it's important to, to maintain those uh, lighter moments. You know, we were talking about, you know, around the water cooler discussing Star Wars, but that's important stuff. And uh, managing stress, I think, is, is a huge key. Um, it avoids burnout, it keeps things fresh, and it makes for better employees and people. Absolutely. Everything you talked about, I agree, and then some, because as we were just discussing and, and joking around about Star Wars and different things, that's what keeps that flame going, that interest. And when you look at what you have to do as a job, if you like it, if you love it, that's great. But then if you love those around you and those people that are with you every day, when, when you come to think about it, you're, you're spending more time with them than you are with your actual family. Yep. But then the latter parts so of the family piece is very important because if you can man maintain that work-life balance, that's always going to be key because for some people, obviously family, it is very important for all of us. And so you have to balance that piece. And how do you balance that? Well, happiness. I mean, if you're happy at your job, you love what you're doing, you love your teammates, you love your coworker, you enjoy coming to work, then the time when it comes to go home, you feel satisfied. And exactly. that's, that's key, I think, in every aspect of work life. Yeah. I, I feel sorry for, you know, you'll hear people all the time say, eh, it's just a job. I feel really sorry for those people. And to me, no matter what it is, even if it's a career switch or whatever, find something you're passionate about, find something you're interested in. Because like you said, you know, I, I never want to look at it like, oh, great, I got to go to work. You know, I, I want to approach it. Hey, it's Monday. Cool. I get to, you know, cut up with the guys and gals or, you know, get mm -hmm. to go to work. So I hope those words never come out of my mouth that oh, it's just a job. 
I agree with you 100% because you don't want to get to that point where it's, if it's just a job for you, then may I suggest look for something else? I know that right. sounds cold, that sounds terrible, but if it's not fulfilling you on the professional side, then just you should probably rethink your your career choice at the moment. And, right. and something that we don't gloss over is the second part that you mentioned about being nimble and making sure that you're remaining current with technology and all of that. Training here at Mosher is very important. We love to upskill our people. We're always pushing our people to make sure that they're learning the greatest and latest, but that they're also taking care of their professional skills. So that's something that combined with all the satisfaction that we talked about, it makes for a good brand and makes for a good individual performer and just satisfies you a little bit more. So again, it's, it's very important for you to keep satisfied in what you're doing and training and being able to train your skills and continue to leveling up is always key. Yep. Agree. Well, Chad, as always, it's a pleasure to have you with us on Ask Anything. Thank you very much for being here today. Well, thanks, Angel. It's, it's always a lot of fun just to, you know, talk about nerdism and Star Wars and IT. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our favorite topics. Yep. Not in any particular order. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Obi-Wan right, series is being released on the 45th anniversary of Star Wars. Yep. What is? There you go. The Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan series, series on, uh, uh, is being released on the 45th anniversary of Star Wars. Nice. Yeah, it was interesting because a lot of people were complaining that, oh, they should have released it on May 4th, you know, May the 4th be with you. I think they chose the right date for, yeah. for such a character. Yeah, yeah it's, an, it's an actual anniversary as opposed to just a, 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 a happy accident <laughs> yes. of pronunciation. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right, Chad. You guys are nerds. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, all we're right. all nerds at heart. We'd like to thank Chad Weed for joining us this week to talk about IT people and their skills and how they are much more than those IT skills. Ask You Anything will be back next week with another episode, continuing to dive deeper with our resident experts and what they're currently working on. If you have an idea or a topic you'd like us to explore, please reach out to us through our social media channels. In the meantime, please remember to give us a rating and subscribe to our feed wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, wombats can do anything, even IT. So long, everybody. Oh.